tell you about making an elevated dock bed. This is very simple to do. Um, the, the supplies you need are very simple. It's best to get this arranged ahead of time if you're doing a large project for a lot of people. You just need PVC. The corners you see are specially ordered from just a few companies in the country. You cannot buy these at the big box stores. Uh, on our website we list a couple of the companies. It's best to um, connect with them right away because there are only about four options of manufacturers in the country. Uh, the legs, of course, are uh, four inches and one stick of PVC can make one bed. So everything you see on the table uh, is all you need to build a bed, um, including a channel box and a hammer. Mike's going to go ahead and get our, um, our, the frame of the bed started. And it's pretty simple and easy to do. Um, little tricks can always save you time. People put them together and then have to redo the, uh, the corners, but just make sure you stick one leg down at all times. So once you get it together, a couple things. Uh, Mike's going to show you that you have to tighten this up because the PVC, depending on if it's hot or cold, you've got to get these legs, uh, the arms, I'm sorry, these are always the arms of the bed and these will be the legs. So you just want to give it a quick tap and don't be afraid to hit it with the hammer. You can give it a good smack. Of all the beds we've built over the years, we've only broken three quarters by hitting them with a the hammer like that. Um, and then you want to stick the legs in. And it's important that it's not torqued. So a good way to prevent that from happening is you can actually drop it on the floor and it squares up. And then just real quick to, um, if you need, if you notice that the leg is not all the way in, you can still tap it on the top. Uh, but that took it out of torque, of course. <laughs> but it's, tap it first, then torque it. Yeah, tap first and then torque it. Okay, so now we're on to the bed build, the uh, cloth building phase. And all you have to do is set your cloth out. And Mike and Patricia are going to build the bed. For those groups that are building um, a lot of beds when you have uh, groups together, it's really important to let people know some certain things. Number one, you need two people to build this because one person building it um, can't hold and use the channel locks and use the drill at the same time. And we tell people all the time, make one bed well instead of three beds that are going to need tweaks. So once you get the bed centered, uh, once you get the frame centered within the cloth, you want to fold your corners under. You want the cloth just to be right inside the tip of the corner. And you fold all four corners under, just give them a little crease. And then you start on your sides. Okay, so this part's important. You're going to make your um, first crease. And it can be a small crease. You're really going to eye this up according to the, the cloth that you have. And then you make your second crease. You might want to keep tweaking it to make sure that you're in the center of all the sides of the cloth. Make sure it's equidistant on each side. So just check it as you go because it'll move. And if you'll pay attention when Mike puts the screw in, you'll notice that he stops the drill when the uh, um, when it's flush with the cloth. Sometimes people tend to keep screwing and it'll strip the PVC and then it won't be a very um, strong hold. And this is why it's so important to have two people. You want to keep everything tight. And we find that it's easier to start from the center and work your way out as you're working on the screw. So what we're going to do, this next step's important. It's best to work opposite sides. So once you've done one side, work the opposite side rather than going to uh, something perpendicular. And now what we're going to do is start on the other side and we're going to put one screw in mm -hmm. and then we're going to use the channel locks to tighten it. Uh, so you put all the screws in the, one, in the first side and then after that you're going to put one screw in and you'll see how we're going to do these other sides. You're going to want to take, the, the person assisting is going to want to take that fabric and really wrench it tight so it's nice and taut. 
this screw in, then you want to put the channel locks on and give it about a quarter turn so this screw makes it to the top of the bed and you're good to go to put the rest of the screws in. And again, work from the center and work out and here's where the person assisting should really muscle it. Get it nice and tight. It depends on which uh, bed you're Size. building, but you're typically going to put four to six screws in each side. The more screws, the tighter the bed's going to be, the better it's going to hold. Don't be afraid to put too many screws. Um, you can never overdo the screws. And it's important to get the screws, just like where Mike's about to go, get them close to the corners because it's the edges that really need to stay tight. And again, this is why it's so important to have two people because that person holding has to keep everything together that you just folded. All right, I'm gonna flip it down. And you're gonna use the channel locks just to give it a little turn. And this turn doesn't have to be as much, it's just to get a little more tightness in it. And again, it's a you know, about a quarter of a turn, and then you're going to put the rest of your screws in. Okay, so once you have all your screws in, make sure you have them evenly spaced. We're going to flip it over, and there's your bed. We're not finished yet, but you can see that there's your bed. Now, we're going to focus on this one corner. We're not going to show you each corner, but this is a nice corner because you see where the cloth hits the plastic perfectly so that the dog doesn't have much to chew on. And the key here um, is to put enough screws here that if the dogs do decide to chew something, they're going to get turned off because they're going to hit um, the, the, the screw. And this is the perfectly spaced screw. You see that it's a little bit to the inside of the cloth, which it needs to be to hold it. Uh, but it's close enough so that a dog is going to be challenged to get their teeth under there. The corners are so important because this is the weakest part of the bed for a dog that has cement and uh, chain link. This is the softest thing they're going to have. So you really want to emphasize to your volunteers to take their time on the screws. Uh, I'm sorry, on the corners. Now you see that one was a little more difficult to get in. It's because it hit the PVC of the arm and that's a good thing um, because it'll help hold this arm from turning. Now we're going to um, skip the rest of the corners and flip the bed over. You want to do that on each corner. And then to prevent the beds from uh, turning, you need two screws in each corner, caddy corner, and that, again that'll hold these legs from giving. And it's important to put that screw near this end so that it does get that arm. And it does take a little more muscle to get those in. So we always want to thank the people that have donated to us. Capital City Awning always donates the cloth for the beds. So we want to give them a shout out. And we may just put Capital City Awning. Um, sends their love to the dogs. Or how about sends paws up? So in building these beds, if you had to build this bed completely and pay for everything, it would be about $12. Um, to maximize your efforts in donations, talk with the boat companies, the awning places. They have ends and seconds and uh, cloth that doesn't sell as well. Um, you know, check them out through the busy season, which is summer usually in any community, when they're using a lot of cloth. Um, Capital City Awning here in Columbus, Ohio has really taken care of us and we're uh, lucky to have built probably about 800 beds with their help. Uh, the screws, this box came from Fastenal. Um, you can see this is a huge box. These are, um, these are fill mod truss head screws. This box has 8,000 pieces. The key with these screws is they have a little bit of a head on them. Um, instead of using washers to help hold the cloth, that's built into this screw. So this one piece is m as efficient as a screw and a washer. And it's eight by three quarters in size. And you can buy these screws in much smaller quantities, but if you know you're going to be building these, this box costs, I want to say about $80, and you'll pay six seven dollars for about 50 of these if you buy them in smaller quantities 
the PVC that you're using, um, these are 10 foot sticks that we happen to use, but if you're gonna do this in large quantities, again, uh, go to a manufacturer, a, a supply place, and you can buy one and a quarter inch PVC in 20 foot sticks um, and have a savings over the 10 foot sticks that you would buy at one of the big box stores. Again, with the corners, you don't have many options. Check out the ones we list online. We've, we've uh, shopped the country, and these are the ones that we're aware of that make the specially made corners. Here's some examples on the floor of the company that came in and made the beds. Um, encourage them to get creative. And again, when you see them on Pet Finder, then you can send them to the company, and they can be excited because they're part of the process of having these dogs be more comfortable while they're in the shelter. Complete directions are on our website. I, we always encourage people to uh, print them off and read them. Um, you know, once you make one or two of these beds, you're a professional elevated dog bed maker. So uh, it just takes patience, and we really emphasize everybody build one bed well instead of three beds that are going to need tweaked a little bit.